Welcome to Zoomers. Welcome, uh, welcome to the YouTube folks. We're glad to have you join us. <laughs> Whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. We want you to be a part of our beautiful and wonderful community. There are two events happening on May 2nd that might interest you. One is Hope for Creation's second anniversary celebration. It is hosted at First Congregational Church in Kalamazoo at 6 p.m. The other competing event is Carrie Newcomer is going to be having a concert at First Congregational Church in South Haven, and that's at 7 o'clock. So you have to make your choice. Mary Kay and I can't go to either because we have a meeting, so we're both bombed. But you can go to one or the other unless you're going to that meeting. We have two church ground spring cleanups going on. One was this past Saturday. How did it go? I, I see nods. I see nods. So apparently it went well. The next one is May 4th from noon, no, from 9 to noon. And it is requested that you bring various yard tools for outdoor tasks. There's information in the email about that. Not a competing event, but on the same day is the Southwest Association Spring Fling. And that's from 12.30 to 4.30, so you can be a little bit late and be right on time. <laughs> they want you to bring a meaningful symbol of some memory that you have, and they're using this book. It's called Wilfred Gordon McDonald Partridge. And uh, if you want to borrow this book to read it, you can. It's a children's book, but it talks about things that are important and memories that are important and such. And so they want to have a time of sharing. There's going to be stuff for kids to do, I think, first grade to sixth grade or something like that. Uh, but there'll be kid things. And it's at Tower Hill in Sawyer, Michigan. So wanting to make you aware of that, that you can do both if you're not too tired from the first. There's a prayer quilt to sign for PL in the back. Please do so. And now, Let's take a deep breath from all the announcements, from all the busyness of this day, from the busyness of your week. Today, our theme of Emerge has us focusing on unfolding our wings and claiming new possibilities. As we begin, you might want to ponder what new possibilities you might be considering flying toward. Feel what that is like in your body to imagine those possibilities. What it's like in your mind to consider. What it feels like in your emotion as you ponder and have been pondering probably. And what it is like in your spirit and how do all of these aspects of ourselves connect and ground us and bring us to wholeness. We have brought ourselves together this morning intentionally for one reason or many reasons. May you be blessed. May you find some connectivity to our divine beloved who is holy love. We will take a few moments to meditate during our prelude. We all come into this world as seeds of potential. Just as mighty oak trees grow from tiny acorns and beautiful butterflies grow from humble caterpillars, each one of us is gifted with unique potential for growth and transformation. Today, as we continue our journey through the Emerge series, we dare to imagine unfolding our wings, claiming our space in this beloved community. Let us join our voices now in our song of invitation.
the responsive portion of this reading. When we arrived in this world, we wondered, From where will I get my sustenance and care? When we were children, we wondered, Who will I become on this adventure called life? Change can make us feel awkward and fragile, and we wonder, When we get How can I move through this change? When we give ourselves permission to dream big dreams, we wonder, How can I realize that vision? Then the love of the divine reminds us, You too are my child. You can emerge to renew life. in spirit and let's join together in singing our opening hymn. Once out of the cocoon, the new butterfly has much to do to prepare for flight. Wings are not yet ready. Small and undernourished, they long for expansion, to move beyond this awkward in-betweenness. As we consider our own metamorphosis, we remember how Jesus renamed Simon as Peter, a description of the rock upon which the church would be built. Are we willing to accept that God's possibilities may come in ways we never imagined, perhaps expanding our notion of who we are in this world? I will be reading from Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? 
Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. In May of 2004, the actress Gwyneth Paltrow and her then-husband, singer Chris Martin, who was the lead singer of Coldplay, they had their first child, a daughter. Does anyone know what they named her? Apple. Apple, <laughs> yes, bingo. They named her Apple. It seemed pretty strange at the time. It still does seem pretty strange, right? To name your child a fruit. Thank goodness it wasn't cantaloupe or something. It had a lot of people scratching their heads and speculating on the teasing that child would get when she went to school. Imagine yourself in her shoes growing up with a name like Apple. Well, that's what I would like us to do today, only with Simon, son of Jonah. Imagine ourselves in his shoes. Because it turns out, calling him Peter is pretty much the same as naming someone Apple. In the biblical world, Peter is not a name. There are no records anywhere of anyone having ever been named Peter until this point in time. The Greek word Petra, which by the way is actually even feminine, so we know it wasn't referring to Simon, son of Jonah, right? Probably not. The Greek word Petra and the Aramaic word Cephas which get translated as the name Peter, are actually nouns, and only nouns, just like apple. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. I tell you, you are rock, lowercase, and on this rock I will build my church. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. These words must have left Simon, son of Jonah, scratching his head in bewilderment, and probably anyone else within earshot. Aside from the total weirdness of being called rock, Simon is, after all, just a fisherman, right? He's just a fisherman who, along with his brother Andrew, dropped his nets to follow this brand new rabbi walking along the Sea of Galilee and proclaiming that the kingdom of God had come near and everyone needs to repent. Now, Simon has certainly seen and learned a lot since then. He knows that Jesus is more than just any other rabbi. Because there were, after all, those beatitudes and their backward and upside-down sense of blessing. He's witnessed countless healings. He sat at the same table as tax collectors and Pharisees. And he's participated in a miraculous feeding of 5,000 hungry souls. And just so you know, in Matthew's Gospel, Simon, son of Jonah, gets to participate in two miraculous feedings. There's another one of 4,000 people. But Peter is still the one whom Jesus called you of little faith. 
when he panicked while he was trying to walk on water and sank. And now Jesus is calling him rock and going to give him the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Doesn't make sense. This, it turns out, is a pivotal moment for Peter, a real turning point. This juncture of, I say that I am, and, well, I say that you are, this juncture is the place where Peter's world cracks open. It's the place where he catches a glimpse of the reality that following Jesus, following Jesus as the son of the living God, means the end of who he was. Simon, son of Jonah, brother of Andrew, the fisherman, and the unfolding of who he will be. Rock, foundation of this church. And this unfolding thing is something that in this moment, the next pair we can't possibly imagine. And right the very next paragraph in this gospel we heard today, Jesus rebukes Simon, son of Jonah, and says, get behind me, Satan. There's a learning curve here. <laughs> now, having just burned our mortgage last week and freeing ourselves of the cocoon of debt, I believe we're at a very similar juncture in our lives. We're no longer who we were. PUCC, the big church with the big education wing for all of our programs bursting at the seams. We're no longer who we were. And we're unfolding into what we will become. It's something we can't yet imagine. We're no longer in debt. But we're still not flush, folks. So just, who are we now? What is our identity? This is a crucial time for us to hit the pause button and answer Jesus' question. Who do you say that I am? Our willingness to honestly reckon with this question is the only way we will catch our glimpse of who it is we are called to be. I don't know about you all, but I grew up in the church. I never thought much about who Jesus was. I never had to answer that question. Who do you say that I am? I just went to church and believed. I'm asking us, Jesus is asking us to wrestle with this question. One commentator calls this a come to Jesus moment because how we answer this question has everything to do with who we are willing to be in the world. She reminds us that gospel writers like Matthew, they're concerned not only about us knowing who Jesus is, they're not looking for some doctrinal or creedal statement here. They are also concerned with us about 
discovering our identity as followers as son of the living God, and most importantly of all, about us shaping our communities in light of Jesus' teachings and actions. So, like I said at the beginning, let's imagine ourselves in Peter's shoes. Let's be here a moment at this juncture between who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And I say you are. If you're comfortable, close your eyes and see yourself there with Peter. Maybe the other disciples around, maybe not. Or maybe just see yourself there as Peter, looking at Jesus. Maybe you're in your backyard, maybe you're in your living room, maybe you're in the Holy Land, Caesarea Philippi. Be there. Hear Jesus saying to you, You know what everyone else is saying about me. But how about you? Who do you say that I am? Why are you here? Why are you following me? Just who do you say that I am? What if we wrestled with this question in each of our ministry teams? What might we discover about ourselves and who the Son of the living God is calling us to become. What might our ministries look like? How might it impact our finance decisions? The job descriptions we write up? the outreach we do. What if over the course of the next month or two, we set aside our neatly organized agendas and dispensed with the usual opening prayer and began our meetings with the question, who do you say Jesus is? Do you think this could impact anything? I think it probably would. So I ask each of you, leadership board, finance, property, greed team, outreach, Christ care groups, music teams, nurture, schools. Who am I missing? Who haven't I said? Music team. I thought I said music team. Music team. Worship, quilters. Mark, isn't there a men's breakfast group? Yes. Men's breakfast group. Stephen Ministers. Stephen Ministers. Book studies. Book studies. Who's got a book study? Oh, Deborah. Oh, Deborah, you are. <laughs> I'm sure you all know who you are. What if you set aside your neatly typed out agendas and your usual opening prayer. I want to challenge you to do that, to set that stuff aside this month and maybe even next and wrestle with this question. It's time for us to do this. Wrestle with this question. There's no, not going to be one right answer. Listen to the responses 
that arise and let them soak into you. If you're worried about having this discussion in your ministry team or your group, Mac or I would be happy to come. We love these conversations. Oh my gosh, we're like real geeky. You would not believe it. <laughs> we are really weird. Y'all knew that though. Listen to the responses that come up. Listen for Jesus' response to you. Open yourselves to the likelihood that you individually or that we are being called to unfold into possibilities we never imagined. That we are called to go someplace that we never had any notion of being part of who we are. Now, not every team meets every month. I know music doesn't. But maybe you can gather over a cup of coffee, meet for a picnic lunch or supper on the lawn. And if you're not on a team, have this conversation with friends or folks that you hang out with here in the congregation, or guess what? You can watch your weekly email or our Facebook page because I'm pretty sure Mac and I are gonna Say, who wants to talk about Jesus? It's time to have this conversation. In our current social and political climate, people are saying all kinds of things about who Jesus is and who Jesus isn't. And so many, too many, of our kin are being wounded are feeling abandoned or alienated. You put this together with our new financial freedom, and now more than ever is the time for us to say who Jesus is and live like we mean it. so that folks know they are not abandoned. They need not feel alienated by this body of Christ. Please join this conversation. Have this conversation. If nothing else, have it with yourself in your journal. And listen for Jesus to name us in return. Blessed are you. I say you are my beloved child, and you can emerge into new life, and I will be with you always. Please join me in this responsive prayer. You raised Lazarus from dead, saying, unbind him, let him go. You two were bound and laid to rest in a cold tomb, freshened by myrrh and aloes. In sorrow, we left you as dead, Jesus, and in wonder, you returned to us as the risen Christ. Untied from the strips of linen you offered us as a newfound freedom. Holy One, we turn to you for guidance to sense the edges of our comfort zone and listen for your call to stretch beyond them. Help us to embrace difficult times of, and moments of uncertainty with peaceful hearts. Give us courage to shift in new directions and to break free from the patterns and habitual grooves that keep us from moving forward into life. We find safety in you and hope for a brilliant, colorful future. Help us extend this courage to others. And as we seek for ourselves, as we call out unto you, O oh God, for ourselves, we also call out on behalf of this community 
those that are a part of this specific place, but also the communities that extend from beyond this PUCC fellowship into the, the communities of our families and friends and neighborhoods. And we speak forth right now, either in our hearts or with our mouths, prayers that we have for all of us to consider and give our amen to. Is there anything that you have to share with this community? Any names or places or situations? For all of those names, situations, and events that are in our hearts and those spoken, we say amen and alleluia in the sure and certain hope that you hear all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, known and unknown, we share in the words that you taught us as we pray together, saying, Our loving God in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to rise as you are able in body or in spirit as we sing together our closing song in the midst of new dimensions.
I want to give a special shout out to Esther Kelly for substituting for Monica these past two weeks. Thank you very much. They're big shoes to fill, and it's been great to have you here. You do a great job. Your, your shows, shoes are big, too. <laughs> um, please remember that everyone is invited to join us for a time of fellowship with coffee and cookies and other delights, I'm sure. There's always good stuff back there. Um, and also, on your way back or on your way out, um, if you haven't already, be sure to sign the prayer quilt for PL Cross. I think, yes. Will you please join me in this responsive benediction? Do not look for the risen Jesus only here in the confines of this church building. We will seek the risen Jesus on roads and in the streets, in all the pathways of life. Do not seek comfort in the familiar, but dare to risk the unfamiliar. Do not cling to all the old expected notions about God, about Jesus, about spirit, but go forth and celebrate this truly good news. Because Christ lives, new possibilities are ever before us. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. And now, my friends, go into your lives, beginning to spread your wings wide into this present day that is so ripe, so ripe with possibilities. And may the assurance of the God who created you, the Christ who is raising you, and the spirit that is going to unleash you be with you now and always. Blessed be and amen.